To give an international perspective, uh, let me start by uh, saying in sub-Saharan Africa, 75% of the population is engaged in small-scale farming. And four out of five households keep livestock. This is not only for economic reasons, but it's also an important source of uh, protein and nutritious food. East Coast fever, it's probably a disease that doesn't talk to any of you, but it's a tick-borne protozoal disease responsible for 40% of mortality of young calves during the first year. These infections can be treated with tetracyclines, the most used antibiotic in the world in animal health. It can also be treated with antiprotozoals, and it can also be treated with uh, uh, acaricides to control the tick, the tick which is transmitting the disease. As you can see, the therapeutic options to treat this disease is putting selective pressure on three different classes of antimicrobials. And yet, East Coast fever is preventable by vaccination, with safety and efficacy already demonstrated. In a study carried out in 2016 in Kenya, it, show, it was shown the cost effectiveness of vaccination against East Coast fever. It reduced the cattle mortality, it increased the milk production, it reduced the use of antimicrobials, not only tetracyclines, but also the acaricides, and it reduces the expenditures in therapeutic options. Where did all these savings go? Well, all these savings were used in this economic study. It was shown that they were used to food, it were used to education, to health, and if you read the study, I really encourage you to have a look to this paper, you will see how gender equality, poverty, as well as life on land were improved. This is making more than five sustainable development goals with a single intervention towards prevention. The World Organization for Animal Health has developed a priority of list of diseases where vaccination could reduce, could lead to the reduced use of antimicrobials, as well as a roadmap with the collaboration of Staraidas on development of alternatives to antimicrobials. Every national action plan should include animal vaccination strategies with a funded implementation plan. That's the first priority we want to advocate for for this high-level meeting in September in New York. What about priority number two? Well, quoting someone definitely worth to learn from, and it's not me, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. So the institutionalization of AMR, AMU surveillance systems must be part of every national action plan. In the animal health sector, we have been supporting the countries to set, develop, and consolidate AMU surveillance systems, multiplying by three the number of countries reporting quantitative data since inception in 2012. This allows us today to have a third data set to discuss targets, to monitor effectiveness of actions and policies, and to secure evidence-based investment. But we are far from ideal. Many countries are deprioritizing investments in animal health, in human health away, pulling away uh, resources, and fragilizing the surveillance systems. This leads to inconsistent reporting at the national level, as well as inconsistent reporting to global levels, to global systems like Animus, the one presented here. I encourage you to use your mobile phones if you want to visit the site with the QR code. Glass or Infarma. We often hear that 70% of antibiotics are sold in animals globally. But is this true? Is this the reality? The fact is that we have no idea. Because these figures are coming from a scarce national reports. And the integrated surveillance and integrated analysis across the sector is not happening at the global level. Without the reliable data, we are, we are simply walking blindly. So the institutionalization of surveillance is the second priority. Then cross-sectorial work, One Health. It's mainly, it's a lot of spoken about One Health. I prefer cross-sectorial work. And this is the priority number three. Every national action plan must work and fund cross-sectorially, establishing coordination mechanisms of, at national and regional levels. While in 2023, more than 90% of countries have developed a national action plan on AMR, only half of them have an effective multisectorial coordinating mechanism in place to provide guidance and oversight to implementation. Only half of them. The dialogue across the sectors is not something easy to build. We know that as we learned that the hard way by establishing the Quadripartite Joint Secretariat in 2019. <laughs> 
who are the people representing my alternative uh, sector? What's their agenda? Can I share the data? How do we make joint decisions? How do I report back to my management? How do I report back to my members in my sector? These are classical human behavior questions. While drug resistant pathogens, the only thing that they do is they keep thriving and moving within and across the sectors. Good news is that when will is strong, incredible things can happen. Who would have imagined in 2019 that four years later, the four international organizations would have a joint website? If you have ever tried to build an interdepartmental, interagency website, you know what I'm talking about. The AMR QJS meets every two weeks to discuss our individual agendas to build a common agenda to support actions at global, regional, and also at national levels. And this is mainly done by the AMR Multipartner Trust Fund. This fund, the MPTF, has mobilized around 30 million US dollars from the European Commission, Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden, and the UK Fleming Fund. It builds global assets at the global level, monitoring and evaluation, AMR legal tool, integrated surveillance, AMR and the environment. But as what is more important is that it supports the implementation of sustainable cross-sectorial national action plans on AMR at country level in 16 countries. These 16 countries you have here in the screen, they have experience in doing that. They, have, they are also learning the hard way. And with this last sentence, I have introduced the priority number four, which is every NAP must count on sustainable and predictable sources of funding, enabling the implementation of cost-effective interventions across the sectors based on evidence gathered through surveillance programs and privileging preventative measures, IPC, WASH, biosecurity, good animal husbandry, you name them. In 2023, Burley, 25% of countries had costed and budgeted their national action plans and had an effective monitoring system in place. Do you remember the cost effectiveness study vaccination that I showed to you at the beginning of the presentation? What would you think if I told you that when you consult the AMR R&D Hub dashboard, hardly 10 cents out of 10 euros are dedicated to the development of new vaccines in animals? Setting sustainable and predictable sources of funding is the only way to enable the implementation of cost-effective interventions across the sectors. Finally, this is a celebration, so let's, let's see the bright side of life. Let me end by congratulating all of you for this kickoff of this fantastic joint action. 50 million euros to spend. This is the total budget of the World Organization for Animal Health. So, enormous responsibility in your hands, and I'm sure that all the learnings gathered during the first edition will undoubtedly support member states and associated countries in their efforts to develop and update their national action plans on AMR, and I'm quoting the concept of your project. Cross-sectorial national action plans, of course, human health, animal health, plant health, and the environmental side of this complex, but not mandatorily complicated equation that we have to face. Thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you very much for your attention. Good luck, and let's make it happen. And a very happy birthday to your organization. Happy birthday, of course. Give us a couple of words. Come on. We, we talked about it when we were preparing. 100 years, <laughs> right? Yes, 100 years. We were founded in 20, 1924, and it was uh, due to the importation of some animals from another continent to Europe. It was a devastating, that was creating a devastating outbreak of rinderpest, today eradicated. The animal health sector knows also how to eradicate diseases. And uh, uh, we are not part of the UN system, but uh, very glad and very happy to work with our quadripartite partners, learning the hard way and uh, supporting each other. So very happy to celebrate. The headquarters are in Paris. I do not know if you know where they are, but we'll be happy to guide you during the coffee. <laughs> Thank, you very much. Thank you, Javier. Thank you. Thank you so much.